Before you get to assemble your engine, there are some very important pre-checks you gotta do to make sure that everything fits properly so you can address it if it doesn't. Now we're not gonna do a full blueprinting here. If you want, there actually are a lot of good videos on there. Power Nation actually has a really good one. Another good resource is this book by CarTech. This book is chock full of information on all of the blueprinting process that you would wanna do on your small box Chevy. Just some generally good engine building techniques. Either way, if you blueprint it or not, there are some very important things that you need to do just for building an engine. And there are actually things that you're gonna do on the top end versus the bottom end. We're gonna stick to the bottom end, particularly right now, so we can get all that buttoned up, flip it over, and go to the top end. First things first, let's start with bearing clearances. So we're gonna start with the main cap bearings on the crank. Now you can get really in depth with different micrometers and measure things that way. What the average home garage engine builder is gonna use is what we call plastic gauge. This sort of looks a little bit like dental floss. Doesn't taste like it though. Don't ask me how I know. But essentially it's just a string of wax and you put it in between your caps and your bearings, torque it down, it squishes, and then you measure it and that tells you how much clearance you have. A couple of things that's really important is you do not want your crank to turn while this is on there, otherwise it's gonna give you a false reading. The range we're going for is between one and a half and two thousandths. Obviously you wanna watch out for any oil holes because you don't want that to smash into your oil holes. Torque to 80 foot-pounds. Then we'll break this loose. Again, being really careful not to turn the crank. So we'll just get our gauge out and measure that. So that looks to be right about one and a half thousandths. So to get this wax off of your bearing and your crank, you're gonna use your favorite booger hook until it's all gone. Wipe it down with your mineral spirits. Then we'll wipe some oil on it just so it's not running on dry bearings. And we'll just rinse and repeat for all the rest of them. Well, all those bearings checked out, they were all pretty close to the one and a half thousandths mark. The one that's on the thrust bearing was closer to two, probably 1.9, somewhere in there. So now the next thing we need to check on this crankshaft is the end play. And to check the end play, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's all the way to the back of the engine. So you can use your dead blow hammer and just kind of tap it all the way back. And then you're gonna set up a dial bore gauge on the snout of your crankshaft, zero it out, and then gently pry forward and backward and get your reading. Now the book calls from somewhere between two and six thousandths. I'm getting a reading of around three, which is a within spec, so that's good. So now generally, if you order the right bearings out of the box, you shouldn't have too much end play. If anything, you might not have enough. So if you don't have enough, what you wanna do is get some really fine sandpaper, like 600 to 1,000 grit, somewhere in there, Spray some WD-40 on it to give it some lubri lubricity, lubricosity. And then just take your thrust bearing and gently, little bit at a time, don't take off too much, just kind of rub it on the sides of each side of your thrust bearing. Put it back in, remeasure it, rinse and repeat until you get within two to six thousandths. Now that we got that done, now we can move on to checking our rod bearing clearance. Checking the bearing tolerance on the piston rods is exactly the same as the crank. Put them on one at a time, make sure you're not hitting any holes in the crank, and torque it down to 60 foot-pounds. And without moving it, take it off and check it on the gauge. According to the book, you're looking for seven ten thousandths on up to 2.8 thousandths. Not quite as big as the one, Looks like it's just under one and a half thousandths. So I think we're good. So we'll just scrape this off with our booger hook and we'll keep moving. All right, well, all the piston clearance checked out. They were all within the range. The tightest one was piston number five and that one was slightly bigger than the one thousandths mark. So it's probably 0.9 or thousandths or somewhere in there. What you can do if it's too tight is you just get some new scotch Brite, not some old used stuff, and take your cap with the bearing and just do like Tony Hawk. Count 10, 20, whatever, just a little bit at a time, remeasure it, and you should be within that range. The one that had the biggest gap was piston number four, and that was slightly bigger than the 1.5 mark. It's probably 1.9 somewhere in there. It wasn't as small as the 2000s mark, so it was in between. Either way, they're all within spec. We're good to go now and it's on to the next thing. 
Next thing we'll be checking is the end plate on our cam. And this is super critical because I'm using roller lifters. And this is the cam I'll be installing. This is the one that the guy gave me when he gave me this engine and I actually don't know what it is. I'm trying to find numbers on here and there are no numbers on the front side, but on the back side, there's an ED going through that hole. Then there's a two zero on the other side. So I don't know if that got drilled out. And then a 900 Z it looks like. The guy that gave it to me thought it was a comp cam. He said it's been so long since they got this that he's not 100% sure. So if you have any idea of what this camshaft could be, please leave a comment down below and let me know. It is a roller cam and like I said, it has less than 100 miles on it because they just put it in this engine. I've got all the lifters for it. We're gonna install this in the engine so that we can check out the end play. Since we're using roller lifters, we're gonna be installing a cam button. This is the cam button that we're gonna be installing. Again, I'll put links and part numbers down in the description. This is a roller cam button. And essentially the idea is that this is gonna roll up against your timing cover and it's gonna keep the camshaft from going forwards and backwards, which is really important on roller lifters. Now this cam button that I ordered didn't come with the retaining plate, so you'll also need to order a retaining plate. And then these cam sprocket bolts get torqued down to 20 foot pounds. You will need to use a screwdriver or something to stop the crankshaft from turning in order to torque these down. Now the reason why camshaft end play is really important is because when you use roller lifters, you don't want the lifters to get too close to the edge of the cam lobes. So that camshaft essentially has to not move at all. And the cam button is important for end play, but also the timing cover you use is important. The stock timing cover isn't thick enough to support that cam button because the cam button rides against the timing cover and that stock timing cover is a stamped steel and it might not be sturdy enough. Just a little bit of flex is enough to get you out of that range that we're looking for. Now one solution for this is to put something on the back of your water pump to press up against your timing cover to keep it from flexing. Another solution is to get a much thicker timing cover. I opted for this billet aluminum one from Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description. But this is thick enough to not flex when that button rides up against it. So when you're checking for end play, you wanna make sure you also install the gasket because that gasket adds just a tiny little bit of thickness to it. Kind of already seeing a problem here because it seems like it's hitting that cam button already. It's not even laying flat. Hmm. Well, that could be a problem. This is measuring 804 as it is. You can take these apart and make them shorter just by removing these shims here. But from the gap on this timing cover, it looks like I need to go around 60, which brings this down to 745-ish. And if I just measure the center section of this roller button, it's 768, 5, 769 ish somewhere in there which is a little bit big according to what i'm measuring here but let's just file this down as far as i can go and see if i can get this on here and make it work yeah it looks like it's still hitting just a little bit so that's not gonna work all right well it's been a couple of weeks there was just no way in the world that i was going to be able to make that roller cam button work on this thing so i did some research and i think the best solution that I can come up with, at least for this engine, is to just go with the old tried and true nylon cam button. The beautiful thing about it is you can cut it down to exactly the size that you need for your particular engine and the desired end play. So this is a comp cams part number 202. Again, I'll put a link to it down in the description. The specs on this are 810 thousandths of an inch, which is bigger than I need. And that's what you want because you're going to cut it down. You can't cut it longer, right? I would recommend getting two of these buttons because chances of screwing this up is pretty high and you don't wanna wait another few days or a week or whatever it takes for them to send you a new one. If you order two of them, then you've got a backup. If you don't need the backup, you can just return it. Simple game. So there's a couple of different ways that you can measure how long your cam button needs to be to get into that desired camshaft end play. A cheap and easy way to do this is to install your cam button into your timing gear, put the timing cover on there, and because this is too long, your timing cover is not gonna sit flush. 
So you want to kind of put the bolts in, make sure the gap all the way around it is even. Then you can get your feeler gauges and measure how big that gap is. And then you can use that measurement to know about how much you need to trim off. You want to sneak up on it, so don't go all the way up to your measurement. Go a little bit, come back and remeasure, install it, check it, pull it out, install it, rinse and repeat. But what I'm gonna do is use this thrust roller button as my baseline starting point and then sneak up on it from there. Okay, so here's how to check the end play. You're gonna wanna rotate your crank so that one of your cam lobes is in the up position in one of these lifter valleys. And then you can position your dial indicator through this little oil passageway here up onto your timing gear. And then you're gonna wanna use a flathead screwdriver. Make sure you put tape over the end so you don't accidentally slip and scratch your cam lobe. Nobody wants that. And then with the camshaft pried all the way back to the rear of the engine, zero out your dial indicator, and then you'll just pry it forward and backwards and get your reading. The end play we're looking for is between four to 10 thousandths, which is not very much. All right, I think I finally got it. It's all the way back at zero. And then if I pull it forward, it's just a shade under five, right where I want it at the bottom end of the spec. So I got a little bit of room to go either way. It's enough to get a little bit of oil in there. It's very easy to get frustrated with this process because it takes a long time. A lot of assembly, measuring, disassembly, it makes it tempting to take off more than you need to. So go as slow as you need to go. Eventually, you'll get it. All right, well, the next thing we're gonna check has to do with the pistons. So I got the engine flipped upside down to access our crankshaft once again. First thing we're gonna do is check our piston rod to crankshaft journal side clearance. And the range we're gonna go for on this is 15 to 25 thousandths. To start, we're gonna measure the width of our crank journals. So we'll take our calipers, 1.902, 903. I know two. I'll write that down. That one is also 1.902. It's pretty precise. Good job, crank company. That one looks 1.902. 1.9015. So next we'll take the pair of pistons and we'll put them together. Now they go together a certain way. You'll see one side is chamfered and one side is not. The chamfered side goes out. So that's the side that meets up with the edges of your crank. You'll also see if you've got stock rods, they have these ears on here. The ears also go to the outside. And we'll just put these together, use our calipers again to measure it. So we'll write that down. So now we just gotta subtract our piston width from our crank width, and that'll get our clearance. So as you can see, we are well within spec. So these are good to go. So the next thing we're gonna check is to make sure that we've got enough clearance between our rods on our pistons and our camshaft. Especially if you're using a high lift camshaft, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your piston rods have enough clearance so that you're not causing yourself any problems, especially under high RPMs and as your engine gets hot and things start to expand. Anything less than about 50 thousandths of an inch is too close for comfort. Now here's how we're gonna check that. We're gonna install all of our pistons and we're gonna put some modeling clay. Ooh, this is made in Italy. It's the good stuff. You just want that to be about an eighth of an inch thick. Make sure we get it on the right side. You want this modeling clay to stick, so make sure there's no oil on your rods. Just like that. Now of course when you install the pistons, you are gonna wanna wipe some oil on the bearings and the skirts and everything, just so we don't have metal to metal contact. And you can rub some oil on the outside of the modeling clay so it doesn't stick to your camshaft, but I think we're good because I lubed up that camshaft pretty well. All right, once you got those all on there, now we just do four full rotations, all the while kind of doing a visual check to see if we can see anything actually hitting. Once you do four full rotations, we'll pull these off one at a time and inspect them. Doesn't look like anything's hitting. If anything, right there, maybe. 
If you see any places where it looks like it might be hitting, this is where you want to take your razor blade and cut it, and then we can see how deep that is. So here I got my feeler gauge. I got a 20 and a 30. These two combined are 50,000. I hold that up where it looks as though maybe it touched something. I mean, we're nowhere near 50,000. We'll put this one back on her and I'll check the next one. Small indent, maybe right there. But again, barely anything. Here's piston number seven. And I think that little indent there happened as I was taking this out, but just to make sure I'll slice it open and measure it. Nowhere near, more than twice as much, we're good. Number four, looks like it could be a little bit smashed up here on the top. So again, I'll slice into that and we'll inspect. So even though it looks like it's indented, we're still within tolerance and we're good. If you find any of these rods getting less than 50 thousandths clearance, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can kind of easily, gently, carefully grind away a little bit of your rod to create a little bit more clearance. Or if it's really severe, this is where you're going to want to rethink your camshaft you're using. Maybe go with the small circle camshaft. That does get a little bit expensive though because a lot of times those will be custom grinds. All right, well that's gonna do it as far as the bottom end pre-assembly checks. There's one more important step that we can do, especially if you're building a brand new engine with brand new parts. I'm gonna show you how to do that on the next episode. So be sure you hit that subscribe button down there. While you're there, hit that like button, comment, share, etc. Check out the social medias down here. Get yourself a t-shirt or a hat or some other fun stuff over here. And I'll see you on the next one.